And tonight, right here at 11 o'clock, the manhunt. A huge force of police zeroing in on a home in Lewiston, Maine tonight. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm Doug Prophet. It's our top story. It comes as ABC News is reporting that a suicide note was found in the home of Robert Card earlier today. ABC's Rena Roy has more on the search for the man who killed 18 people and injured many others. Tonight, authorities surrounding a home belonging to suspect Robert Card in the town of Bowdoin and shouting out demands for him to come out. Later, police saying they were unsure if Card was inside, but following proper protocol in tracking down all leads. Police say the 40-year-old Army reservist opened fire at a bowling alley and nearby restaurant in Lewiston Wednesday night, killing 18 people and injuring 13 others. Time recreation for an active shooter incident, multiple people down. Chilling images show him entering that bowling alley, an AR-style weapon raised to his shoulder. Megan Hutchinson and her 10-year-old daughter Zoe hid inside a storage room moments later. When I turned around, I saw the shooter right like behind me had just come in the door. We barricaded in there and another parent was in the room with me. She had a phone. Um, she called 911. Zoe's leg grazed by a bullet. I never thought I'd grow up and get a bullet in my leg and it's just like like why like why do people do this? Others never made it out, including 76-year-old Bob Violet, a youth bowling coach who reportedly died trying to protect the children in his care. Among those killed at the restaurant, members of a group of deaf adults who were out for the night playing cornhole. Also, Joseph Walker, who worked at that bar and grill. His father, speaking with ABC World News anchor David Muir. Your whole body, everything goes out of you. Your heart goes flip-flop and your, gut, your head can't take it. And and uh, you just feel like you're going to blow up. Shortly after the rampage, the suspect's car found at a boat launch several miles from the crime scenes, a firearm discovered inside. Authorities tell ABC he owned a boat. The Coast Guard has also been searching that area. Rena Roy, ABC News. We'll keep you updated on the manhunt during this newscast. Investigators are also digging into Card's past. They tell ABC News that he spent two weeks at a mental health facility this summer after hearing voices and threatening to shoot up a National Guard facility located in Maine. Right here new tonight in Louisville, Louisville Metro Police are looking for a driver who hit and killed a woman in the California neighborhood, then took off. Police say just after 8.30 tonight, a woman was crossing Broadway near 15th Street when she was hit by a car. The car did not stop and left the scene. EMS pronounced the woman dead at the scene. Detectives were also looking for suspects in a deadly shooting in the Parkland neighborhood that happened late this afternoon. Police say just after 3.30 today, officers responded to the shooting on West Kentucky Street, South 28th Street. When officers arrived, they found a man who had been shot. He later died at the hospital. Anyone who can help detectives on these cases is urged to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. Well, all new on the night team from building barges for decades to restaurants, park spaces, coffee shops, and condo living with river views. That's how the old Jeff Boat property would be transformed right in Jeffersonville. And tonight, for the first time, we got to see the drawings of the plans. They were released. WHS 1119's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie are talking to eager residents. It's amazing. Um, I'm I'm actually very excited. The future of Jeffersonville's prime waterfront land is tremendous. Residents have been waiting for the designs for the abandoned Jeff Boat Shipbuilding site. After several meetings for the public to weigh in, take a look. Here's what phase one will look like over the next 10 years. An opportunity to capture the riverboat cruise industry that's coming along the Ohio River today. Uh, we have an interest in working with them to put landings here on the site to bring those tourists into the community. American Commercial Barge Lines owns the land. This this $930 million investment will bring more residential office space, restaurants, and a full-service marina. Dylan Fisher, vice president of real estate at the Wheatley Group, says unless you worked at Jeff Boat, you've been on the other side of the fence. And so when that fence finally comes down and there's a development over there, it's going to be pretty... Uh, 
impactful for the residents that either had parents or grandparents that may have worked there. For the first time, 80 acres of Jeffersonville's waterfront would be open to the public. Phase one of the project is worth $530 million and will bring over 3,000 jobs. ACBL is doing everything they can to connect folks to their property while preserving the history of Jeff Boat. But I'm just so excited that something that meant so much to our city and really to our country uh, at such a critical time in our nation's history is now going to be able to continue in such an amazing role for our city. Chris Howard went to Jeffersonville High School and has now been back for 10 years. He's excited for the city's continued growth to bring more people and attractions to the area. This was kind of the place that you moved away from, but now, honestly, I think this is going to attract a lot of people. Although in the beginning of the introduction of this project, Howard had tons of questions regarding pollution, but those questions have now been answered. There had been some concerns about environmental damage and that sort of thing, but um, as far as I can tell and as what's been presented here, that really isn't a concern anymore. He and so many others are happy for the livelihood of Jeffersonville returning to its Ohio River roots. In Jeffersonville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. And what a history. The site on the Ohio River has been a shipyard since 1834. First, it was called Howard Shipyard. Jeff Boat, as we know it, opened in 1938. During its operation, the shipyard was one of Jeffersonville's largest employers. Jeff Boat operated until 2018, launching its final barge on April 23rd that year. The land has been sitting empty ever since then. All new on the 19 of a developing story, Ford is now delaying production at its second battery plant, which as you know is brand new in Hardin County. We are also slowing down several investments, including making a decision with SK on to delay the second Blue Oval SKJV battery plant in Kentucky. The company made the announcement tonight in its third quarter earnings call. Chief Financial Officer John Lawyer says they're adjusting their electric vehicle production and future plans to better match demand. Blue Oval SK is building two plants in Glendale, expecting to employ 2,500 people each. A Ford spokesperson tells us the first plant is still scheduled to begin operations in 2025. That announcement comes as Ford Kentucky truck plant workers return to work today after the company and UAW reached that tentative deal last night. Local UAW President Todd Dunn right here in Louisville calls it the best deal he's ever seen. It includes a 25% wage increase over four and a half years and the return of cost of living adjustments. Workers we talked with today say they're excited to go back to work. Safe to say a lot of us is going to be relieved. Of course, not all of us, because some people, you know, people are different. But personally, I'm speaking for myself. I'm glad it's over. Dunn said he's heading to Detroit Sunday to meet with national leadership and talk about the new deal. He anticipates local union members will vote in person on November 12th. Happening late today, moving toward another ethics trial. Louisville Metro Council Democrats said this afternoon they'll need to form a charging committee to remove Republican Council Member Anthony P. Argentini from office. WHS 11 Focus Team reporter Travis Breeze and photojournalist Aspen Hester show us how soon we could see a full vote to remove P. Argentini from office. Councilwoman Cindy Fowler says they will make a decision by next Tuesday on whether or not to form a charging committee, but all signs point to that happening. She says the people of Louisville want consequences for Piagentini's actions. I think the public expects us to do the right thing. There was recommendations handed down, and I believe that those uh, speak for themselves. The Ethics Commission found Piagentini guilty of six ethics violations last week for taking a job with the Louisville Healthcare CEO Council soon after sponsoring one of their grant applications. He did remove his name as a sponsor seconds before the final vote. Fowler said she hopes a Republican will join them on the charging committee, but they will move forward either way. I'm still uh, holding a spot for, for the, our Republican colleagues. Fowler said she could not name the Democrats that have put their names forward, but they do have more than five. Piagentini did not make any comment to us today. He is still considering his own legal action to try to clear his name. He also confirmed that he is still an employee of the Healthcare CEO Council, but he made clear to us that his employment has nothing to do with the $40 million grant. In Louisville, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. To stay up to date and the latest on this story, go to our website, whas11.com. 
The Kentucky Supreme Court is weighing in on the Crystal Rogers case in response to the request by Brooks Houck to have the judge dismissed. Houck is charged in the death of his former girlfriend, Crystal Rogers. His attorneys claim that Nelson County Judge Charles Sims shows bias toward Houck through current and former court proceedings. Now, the Kentucky Supreme Court Justice Lawrence B. Van Meter is responding to the request, sending it right back to the Nelson County courtroom. The Chief Justice wants the attorneys to ask Judge Sims to recuse himself. If Sims declines, he will then be asked to submit his own countervailing facts or considerations. The Chief Justice says at that point he will review the facts and determine whether to designate a regular or retired justice or judge of the Court of Justice as a special judge. Houck's attorneys have also asked the Kentucky Court of Appeals to review Judge Sims' decision to keep Houck's bond at $10 million. Well, tonight it is no longer a home filled with dangerous chemicals in the High View area of Jefferson County, and it's also no longer a home. The chemicals, everything gone. The job that lasted about 10 days is now finished. Our news crew was allowed to get a first look inside the work zone and what was once the home at 6213 Applegate Lane. What's left is a giant hole in the ground and some concrete where the house once stood filled with hundreds of chemicals, more than 100 chemicals they revealed today. So what's next for the site? It's going to look like it did before it was built in 1960. The EPA's Chuck Berry. We're going to remove the, the, uh, the foundation concrete uh, and then we're going to fill the hole in and grade the site down and uh, control water and get some grass growing on it so it doesn't erode off. All chemicals were removed and taken to temporary storage at an MSD facility by the end of the day today.